Burkitt lymphoma is a rare high-grade B-cell lymphoma that has been studied in various clinical trials and reports, but often with small sample sizes. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma overall is about the seventh most common cancer. However, within the term non-Hodgkin lymphoma, there are more than 70 different subtypes. One of the most uncommon is Burkitt lymphoma, which represents about 1% of all cases of adult non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the United States. So due to its rarity overall, as well as the usual small sample sizes in various reports over the years, there has been a need and a desire to identify a valid prognostic score. We are really happy to put together a, a multi-center effort. It started mainly with a multi-center retrospective, what we called real world effort in the United States. We collaborated across 30 institutions across the United States, mainly academic centers, but also several centers that had community oncology patients as well. And what we really sought in that initial analysis and publication in blood uh, that just came out in, in paper uh, a few weeks ago was really to look at in the contemporary modern era, in other words, in the past 15 years or so, what is how are patients presenting? What are their characteristics? What are their ages? What type of disease treatment did they receive? And of course, what were their outcomes? And then we started to get at what was their prognosis and were there potential prognostic factors? We then took that, those cases, which totaled over 630 cases of Burkitt lymphoma in the United States and sought to really fine tune a prognostic model, but to really have it meaningful, it needs to be validated by an external data set. And that's what we did. We partnered with colleagues across multiple European countries, Canada and Australia for patients they treated between years 2004 and 2019. And so we ended up with an initial discovery cohort or a derivation cohort of 633 patients in the United States, and then uh, developed the prognostic model and then validated it with 457 cases of an external data set from uh, those three countries, I'm sorry, those three continents I had alluded to. So, and we really sought to develop a simple prognostic score, but of course we wanted it to be robust. And we mainly studied clinical factors. We were not at the point, we're not at the point, although we hope to do this at a later state, to really start to dig into some molecular differences. So this is mainly clinical features of the patient, of the disease, et cetera. We studied 40 different features. And then through rigorous statistical analysis, started to analyze which are the most important. Uh, you, usually, you start in a univariable analysis and then take that to a multivariable analysis. And ultimately, we ended up with four most important factors, one of which was age equal to or greater than 40. And these are factors, adverse independent prognostic factors. So the first was age equal to or greater than 40 years which is interesting in itself because most lymphoma prognostic scores, that adverse difference had been at age 60. So this is 20 years younger than most scores. Why? Probably due to the intensity of therapy is part of it. Also, patients with Burkitt lymphoma present at an earlier age. With many non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the median age is in the 60s, whereas in our data set, it was in the mid 40s. So that was one, age. The second was what we call ECOG performance status, two, three, or four. And so the higher the number, the weaker a patient is. Uh, they're not able to perform their normal activities of daily living, et cetera. So the worse their functional status, or what's called in this case performance status was. The third was a blood test called the LDH. Now that's been prognostic in many scores, but what we found here, it's such a rapidly growing tumor. LDHs in Burkitt lymphoma aren't typically elevated. They're very elevated. So it wasn't just abnormal or not, as in other scores. It was actually, it had to be three times 
the upper limit of normal to classify. And then the final of the four prognostic scores was any evidence of central nervous system involvement. And what do I mean by C central nervous system or CNS? So literally tumor in the brain or, and or in the spinal fluid, which happens at an increased incidence of lymphoma. It can happen in any lymphoma, but there's a more proclivity in Burkitt lymphoma. And we've known that for decades. In fact, the treatment we use, you have to actually, as part of your treatment is not just intravenous in a port or through an IV, you have to give what's called intrathecal therapy prophylactically into the spinal fluid to uh, literally, when we say treat and cure the whole body, we, we mean it with Burkitt lymphoma, including the brain and the spinal fluid. So every one of those factors you had, um, if it was zero and we were able to group them, zero factors constituted a low risk group, just one factor constituted an intermediate risk group. And if you had two or more factors, which frankly was 46% of the patients, you fell into a high risk group.